Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Today is Wednesday, March 16th, and it's time for me to get some of my flowers planted. I have a lot going on in my little plant room today. So I have some anemone and ranunculus. Uh, they're soaking back here behind me. They're gonna get potted up. They're my second uh, sewing of those two things. So I have another video about that, so I'll put a link to it below if you uh, wanna check that out and see how I'm gonna do that. But right now those are just soaking and I'm just gonna give them a little, little wiggle of the water once in a while to keep it ox oxygenated. And uh, I also, I'm gonna be planting some banana seeds up later today, but I'm gonna make a separate video on that and that'll come out later um, once I've had a little bit of time to play around with these. So there's the banana seeds just waiting to get planted out for later. But what we're gonna focus on in this video is planting a bunch of my flowers. So my summer flowering uh, plants here. I'm really excited to get these down and I'm going to be using my row flats uh, to do these. And I think that'll work well for these plants that I'm growing today. It's my first year using this, um, but so far I've had a lot of fun it's worked well for me. I did my peppers. I did a few um, herbs in here. So I've taken a few things out. They've had the odd seeds still pop up. There's a few peppers still um, coming up here that I'll need to pop out into larger pots soon. Um, and I have a little bit of dianthus here. It's a rainbow loveliness. It was a free seed pack from um, Heritage Harvest Seeds. So I've just popped those in there and they came up really quickly. So I wasn't sure how they would, um, how long they would take, but I'm very happy there, so I'm going to be popping those out into their own containers uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, but today we're going to work on my summer flowering, um, some of my summer flowering plants here. So I have some impatiens, some chrysanthemum, cleome, and three kinds of snapdragons. The impatiens are from Save Seed, uh, from uh, plants that I planted in my own yard. I usually have impatiens growing in my yard somewhere. They're a great, bright, cherry plant for those shady areas of your yard. So I always like to include some, um, but you do need to start them early. They take quite a while to get going. Uh, and uh, so it's time to do that. I am now 10 weeks from my last frost date, my average last frost date. And so I want to get these things planted. So I don't have the instructions uh, for the impatience anymore. Like I said, I have saved seed here, uh, but they're very small seed. Um, there's some chaff in there, but the seed itself is very, very tiny. The seed I believe is, yeah, from 2020 is what my little container says there. So like that is one single seed on the tip of my finger there. So they're very, very tiny. They take a long time to come up. And usually with seed that's this tiny, they like, um, they don't want to really be covered up. They, they want to be exposed to the light. And uh, if I remember correctly, that's what impatience want. If I'm wrong, uh, I'll put it on the screen for you to correct myself. Uh, but I forgot to look that up before we got going and I'm pretty sure I've been doing these a lot of years. I do have a video on planting impatience specifically. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Now I seeded these very thickly just because they are several years old now and I'm just not sure um, if they'll be as viable as fresher seed. So I did sow them quite thickly in here. Looks like I have a couple that have popped over into the next row. So I'm just gonna slip them back over where I want them. I tell you, skewers are a great garden tip tool. There's a few more over here. So hopefully that, that got them all. Um, so I have some, just some little tags here. So I'm just going to leave those. Um, once I'm done planting everything, I'll put a really fine layer of vermiculite over this. Uh, and with the impatience, it will be very, very fine, but just something to have just to hold some moisture for the seeds uh, as they're getting going. So those are done. That's all there is. Impatience, really small seed. It likes, likes to be exposed to the light. So the next thing I have here is this 
chrysanthemum bright eyes and I just I was at Walmart yesterday actually and found this it's Mackenzie seeds just you know off the Walmart shelf and I just thought these were so pretty so hopefully you can see that they look like they have kind of like a purple center and a white flower um, and the with that yellow ring lots of color to this really so i'm hoping these are as pretty as they look on the package and i'm excited to try them um, i'm not sure i've grown chrysanthemum from seed before thinking i must have at some point but i don't remember it says they take 14 to 20 days to sprout so to me that's a good plant to have in a tray like this where it's going to be you know taking up less space while you're waiting for it to sprout for you know a couple weeks to three weeks um, and then i can always move them over into a, a planting tray and uh, make sure all my holes are filled because I don't know how well these germinate, how well they work. Um, so it says about three millimeters. So these are probably pretty small seeds too. And yeah, they bloom in summer. It looks like they'll probably spread to about 12 to 18 inches. So probably don't need a whole ton of these. So I'm supposed to see, space the seeds about a quarter of an inch. So we'll aim for that and see. Well, they're not. I guess I could have looked at the package and known they weren't really tiny. Um, so I'm guessing these are maybe coated. Yes, it says they're coated seed to increase oxygen penetration, availability, and easier seed handling and visibility and accurate spacing of seeds. So that's why they say they've uh, coated these. Because, yeah, I'm like, for one, for only an eighth of an inch deep that seems like they should be really small seeds and um, this color just seemed unnatural for seeds so yeah these are coated seeds and I'm just going to try and space them out about a quarter of an inch down my little row here they seem to be going zigzaggy that's not on purpose that's just kind of where they're falling so I'm excited for these you know sometimes you're just looking at the, the seed packs as I'm sure you all know, and you just see something that you just need to try. So coated seed doesn't always store that well. There's lots left in here, uh, but it says there's 150 seeds in here, in fact. Um, do I wanna plant more? I don't really think I need any more, so I don't need more taking up space in here. So I'm just going to put that, actually I'll put these on this side so that when I do do the vermiculate there you can see what I'm doing. Tiniest bit of soil. This is just the pots and plants mix um, with some vermiculite, no with some perlite mixed in. Uh, the perlite is just, I just add that in because it adds extra drainage and loftiness to the soil so it doesn't get too heavy, um, which is really good for seed starting. So I think I have most, most of the seeds just barely covered and that's really what you want when it says an eighth of an inch. Now I did, um, I filled these rows and I poured water in here so that the soil that they're sitting on is really nice and damp as well. All right, so the Cleome. I tried growing this last year. I believe this exact variety. I thought I had some plants that came out of it, but I do not remember seeing flowers from them. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what I did with them. If they, maybe they got frost early in the spring and I forget. I or if I planted them somewhere, I don't remember. But we're gonna try again. They're supposed to be just amazing for pollinators. Planting depth, a quarter to half an inch. That's pretty deep. Okay, so this is, if I didn't say it's Pink Queen. Um, another name that you might know Cleome by is uh, Spider Flower. So I'm just kind of trying to make a little bit of a furrow in here. Okay, so this is to sow directly out in the garden. Um, so I'm guessing that somewhere I read that for a short season it should get planted indoors because I had it in and listed to plant on my planting schedule calendar for right now. 
So they say to space the seeds three inches, but since I'm going in this tray and I'll be up potting them soon, I'm going to put them a little closer than that. Now, there's a chance these plants don't like to be up potted and also said on the seed pack that they like sandy soil. So that could be part of my problem. I have heavy clay. So um, these may not just be very happy growing here. I know some people with sandier soil, so maybe I'll give some away if I get any amount growing and they can give them a try and see how that works for them in their soil. But we'll put a little bit on here because it's said to have like a quarter to half an inch of soil over top of the seed. Don't need chunks of rocks. So there it is. I just use these little colorful labels, these little plastic labels. I like the height of them for when I'm getting my seeds started. And I've actually started using um, chalk marker on them. And once it dries, it stays put really well. I used it on some wooden stakes out in the garden last year, it worked great. Um, and uh, then they wipe off really easily. So that's the first year using the chalk marker. So you can see where I've wiped off permanent marker from the back in some spots, but it works pretty well. So if you're kind of looking for, for a, a marker for your seed starting labels, I would say those chalk markers are great. I'm just noticing I need one more cell here. I didn't put enough in. So I'm just going to fill up one more. Just trying to get the soil pretty even like pretty level in these little trays here because that one is dry soil I'm just gonna go and put some moisture on it let that soil settle in a bit all right now we'll have enough soil to do the rest of these snapdragons so snapdragons are another one of those plants with really really tiny seeds this is the Madame Butterfly Bronze. I've never personally grown this um, variety before. There's the size of the um, whoops, Snapdragon seeds, which I may have just dumped one somewhere. Uh, but it's really highly recommended. So I'm excited to try it. So, um, Snapdragons are another one of those plants that need light to germinate. Like I said, these are really tiny seeds. And I'm just going to put them all across here. And they generally germinate in about a week or two, so should see some action with those soon. These were from stems. Yeah, this is from Stem's uh, Flower Farm. The Cleome was Valley Green. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree, if you're wondering. Um, so then I have the Rocket Mix Snapdragon. This is a seed that I collected off of my Rocket Mix from last year. I absolutely loved those plants. I really enjoyed them. So here's the seed I collected. Snapdragon seed is really easy to collect. Now, I, I never worry about getting all the little bits out, so again, it's gonna have a bunch of chaff with it, but that's okay. So I'm just going to sprinkle these across. And since I have lots of this seed, I'm going to save some and I can make another sowing of it outside in the spring. And that one is from Vessie's Seeds. And then I have the Snapdragon Snaptastic Mix. Never grown this one before either. Um, it's also from Vessie's. This one's supposed to be a mix of yellow, orange, flame, magenta, pink, and red blooms. Again, 
very tiny seed. We'll just sprinkle it across the top of the soil. Okay, so now that I have all of my, my seeds planted, I'm just going to put a really fine dusting of vermiculite over top of these planting areas. Like I said, I think I said anyways, uh, the vermiculite helps to um, regulate the moisture at the top of the soil, helps to prevent having a lot of extra fungal, bacterial kind of growth happening with that extra moisture regulation. So it's just, that's all it is. You don't have to have it. If you don't have it, don't put it on, that's fine. Um, so that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna put these, because some of these seeds want light, um, the snapdragons, I believe, and did I say the Cleo? No, I think it was just the snapdragons would prefer light uh, to germinate. Um, so I'm just going to pop these uh, back onto my, uh, my shelving here under some lights and let them uh, do their thing and grow on. Now, I did have this on a heat mat just because the peppers were here, but I think I have germination in almost all of these peppers. So I might just kind of turn the heat mat so it's still under this side a little bit more and leave the snapdragons so they don't have the heat mat under them because they don't really want that extra bottom heat, but it won't hurt them. And the impatience wouldn't mind it. So I'll just kind of let the heat be on this end of the, the tray and not so much at this end. And uh, the main thing is to get the light for the uh, snapdragons. I'm gonna just put a little bit of very fine spray of water on top just to make sure they're all settled in. But these fine seeds don't really like to be watered from above very much, so that's all I'll do now. I'll just use this tray, it has a wicky mat under it, so I can put water in here and it'll wick it up uh, through these channels, through the soil and to the seeds. And because of these nice shallow channels, it'll work really well to keep them moist, which is another benefit to using a tray like this. So. Like I said, now I just have to wait for my buttercup and ranunculus to finish soaking. They need a few hours of soaking in that water to plump up and then I'll get them planted later. And I'm gonna try my hand at growing bananas. So check out the video on growing anemones and ranunculus if you want more information. Uh, I'll put that in the description down below as well as uh, I have one for impatience. I think I even have one for snapdragons I can put down if you want. And watch uh, for the video on bananas coming out uh, later on, probably this summer. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.